Hey man, it's my name is Ray Jade, and I have had enough of this. <sighs> I've had enough of this Nintendo thing. My next step is to ruthlessly insult every single person who owns an Xbox, and also insult Xbox themselves and call everybody an Xbox on Twitter. Sony will love me for this. I'm sure of it. One hour later. What the hell? They're calling PlayStation bad. I would never do something like this. I'm best friends with Jim Ryan. I, I'll give you proof right now. Hey, Jim Ryan, aren't we best friends? He loves me. Let's talk about everybody's favorite trend. War. It was such a huge trend in the 1910s. Console war. Oh, God, here we go again. I made fun of console wars and console warriors back in my Pikmin video and song format. And then after that, console wars exploded on Twitter. My bad. So let's make fun of them again, because I've got nothing better to do, and they've got nothing better to do than shine the shoes of companies that don't even know they exist. But what are console wars? Dumb. Console wars fall under two definitions. One, competition between two console manufacturers, which I'd rather call the console race, not wars. And two, when annoying people argue over which gaming console is better. Usually these wars are between Xbox and PlayStation fans, and Nintendo fans have actually been rather sane in the past few years in this context. Holy shit, how are Nintendo fans the sane ones? This isn't to say Nintendo fans haven't partaken in console wars, far from it. But Xbox and PlayStation warriors don't take Nintendo fans seriously. Which is strange considering the Nintendo Switch alone has outsold nearly every other console in existence. But Nintendo isn't really part of the console race anymore. They will sell well regardless, unless it's the Wii U. Nintendo doesn't seem as focused on making the most powerful console of all time, and instead wants to stick to machines with more personality and accessibility. And I think most Nintendo fans have caught on to that, and that's why a lot of them don't really care about console wars. But a lot of console wars in the past revolve around Nintendo and other gaming companies. Speaking of which, you'd probably think console wars are a relatively new trend, but... You'd probably be surprised at how much they started popping up back in the day. The first major console war and console race was between Nintendo and Sega. So let's go back to 1983 where the gaming industry had suffered a severe market crash. God damn it, E.T. the game. It's that fucking alien! Nintendo was already a successful arcade developer with games like Donkey Kong, but wanted to move into home consoles and release the Famicom in 1983, exclusively in Japan. This console went on to be the best-selling console in Japan even with its technical issues at launch. This prompted Nintendo to try to launch it in America, but America was still feeling the effects of the gaming market crash. Nintendo redesigned the Famicom so it would look more like a VCR unit and changed its name to the Nintendo Entertainment System, and they also implemented tools that would prevent unauthorized games and the loss of publishing, which caused the market crash in the first place. This console helped bring back the gaming market after the crash, selling 34 million units in North America during its lifetime. But from the shadows came a new competitor. SEGA! Sega experienced success with arcade games and also wanted to move into home console manufacturing. Sega made the SG-1000 and released it on the same day as the Famicom in Japan, but it didn't outsell the Famicom. I wonder why. Sega reworked the SG-1000 multiple times, even creating the Mark III, which was more powerful than the Famicom, but this then instantly let them win the console race. Nintendo had more exclusive games with their contracts with other developers to exclusively make games for the Famicom. Sega then released the Master System, which was a worldwide release of the Mark III, but Nintendo still won because of exclusivity. But then came the fourth generation. Wait, there's numbers after 16? NEC was a new competitor who released the PC Engine marketed as a 16-bit console, while the others at the time were still 8-bit. Sega saw this and made the Mega Drive, released in 1988. They used arcade game technology and now implemented 16 bits and made it more mature looking. People liked the Mega Drive, but it was soon overshadowed by the creator of Italy himself, Super Mario Bros. 3. It's Mario's full name, right? Sega wanted to push the Mega Drive in the US, so they rebranded it to the Sega Genesis. They started going hard with the promotion and started signing more and more developers to develop for the Genesis. But the Genesis still struggled to outsell the NES, so they had to come up with something new. And his name was Sonic Unleashed, I mean, Sonic, sorry, 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 Sonic the Hedgehog. The release of Sonic and a slew of lineup changes and marketing changes, as well as a $40 price cut, gave Sega their first gain on Nintendo in the nearly 10 years that they had been trying. All of this predated the release of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, which was to be more expensive at $199, so families decided to stop waiting around and buy the Genesis. Nintendo didn't really care about Sega up until then, 
Oh, look at the little guy. Trying to outsell us. Well, you better not be fucking trying. I know a guy who knows a guy who can call a guy who knows a guy that knows a guy who can put you six feet under, bitch. You know what they call me? Tony. Tony Mafias. You best not be messing with me. But Nintendo saw the success of the Genesis and went, Oh shit, the little guy had a fucking growth spurt of like 20 feet and is taking steroids and you beat my ass. They started becoming more aggressive with marketing to show features of the SNES that weren't present in the Genesis. And this was the invention of annoying people. Now, between Sega and Nintendo, it was mainly a console race, but there were probably people who tried to fight for a certain company. I don't fucking know, I was on life. But this set the blueprint for future console wars mainly between Sony and Microsoft. And here we are today, the invention of annoyance is only improving. Hey guys, look, new exclusive game for a console I don't play on. Time to insult it. Console wars today are mainly between diehard fans and consoles. Obviously the console races still exist and competition is good for companies, but most of the fighting comes from the people who forgot that jobs exist. Seriously, who the actual fuck finds the time to look at trash cans in a game and say that the trash isn't polished? Now a lot of console warriors make stupid points nowadays as bait. A lot of it happens on Twitter where they pay over $100 a year for a platform that will cease to exist by 2024. It's bait because they get interaction money. They know by making dumb points, they'll get an extra $5 a day. But that doesn't mean they don't believe what they're saying. They very well might, and plenty of other people do as well. But these people feed this endless cycle of people getting angry in console wars. And they just won't quit! Hey, newsflash assholes. No one really cares whether you prefer Xbox or PlayStation. So there's no need to protect your favorite billionaire companies with your life, because it doesn't fucking matter! You can have pride in the console you choose, sure, nothing inherently wrong with that. You can prefer one console over another, that's normal, that's an opinion. But you really do not have to fight over it. It's not that big of a deal, it's a big hunk of plastic. And the companies behind it will give you a little star for battling for them all the time. And most of the time when these console warriors call out bugs in the game, THEY'RE FORCING THE BUGS TO HAPPEN! Now it doesn't mean these games don't have any bugs, it seems like nowadays bugs are a business practice. But people call out something like Spider-Man 2 for being buggy and then they show a bug that just doesn't happen in a normal playthrough. And was literally forced to happen. I'll give you an example. Like, look at the Callisto Protocol. It's broken. Like, I've broken games on purpose before. AS A JOKE, NOT TO PROVE A GODDAMN POINT! Again, a lot of these console warriors are doing this stuff as bait. They get interactions on Twitter and in turn, get money. So do me a solid, and instead of interacting with their tweets, no matter how angry they make you, just ignore them, don't give them money for trying to stir up heated discussions, and just play the games you want on the consoles you want. Also, make sure you get a one-up on them and have a life. Cause they never fucking walk. Gaming gets taken more and more seriously every single year, meaning that more and more people will forget the definition of not being annoying, and they will keep these console wars alive for the rest of the time while the companies they're fighting for uh, don't even have to do a single thing. But I understand these console wars probably didn't understand a single word I've said this entire video. Let's do this shit again.